Hi, my name is Maria Kordavic and I'm a senior lecturer in business psychology at the University of Lincoln. I'm also director of the newly established National Centre for Organisational Resilience at Lincoln International Business School, also at the University of Lincoln. And I'm director of researching people, which is my own company, providing soft skills and organisational development support, as well as research and evaluation consultancy, predominantly to the healthcare sector. I felt that it may be useful, given the current context, to unpick the concept of resilience at work somewhat. The discourse around resilience uh, feels like it's ever present currently. And here I provide a mini synthesis of the literature, if you like, so that listeners can decide for themselves whether resilience is a useful concept to them at present uh, or indeed otherwise. So I'll just get the slides up for you now. I'd like us initially to have a go at defining resilience. We'll go through some of the understandings of resilience at work and the clue there is in the plural because there are several. We'll also go through some of the key critiques of the concept and then think about some useful operationalizable solutions and interventions. So firstly, what is psychological resilience? Well, the Latin root word is resilere, meaning to leap back. So it's a sense of bouncing back from a particular misfortune. It's been defined as the ability of a person to recover, rebound, bounce back, adjust, or even thrive following misfortune, change, or adversity. So again, when we think about the current context of COVID-19, when we hear about resilience, there's a sense of what can you do at present to not only sustain our lives as they were, but thrive, to continue to produce, to continue to have outputs in our day-to-day -day lives and I'll leave it for you to decide whether that sort of response is indeed resilient but that seems to me as the predominant narrative currently uh, around resilience. Can we continue uh, as business as usual? Those who experience mild transient perturbations were deemed by a Bonanno as resilient individuals. So things that for others may be particularly difficult. The resilient amongst us, amongst us experience these only in a, in a transient, uh, mild sense. So we can think of resilience as positive adaptation to adversity. Now, one of the key questions within the discipline of psychology, uh, and I'm speaking to you as an academic psych chartered uh, psychologist, is whether resilience is a trait, a process, or an outcome. Does it really matter? Well, as if we think of resilience as a trait. So traits are stable characteristics that enable individuals to adapt to circumstance. So these are inherent characteristics to us that do not change. And resilience might be comprised of a range of protective factors, such as being resourceful, demonstrating strength of character, a sense of optimism, block and block as spoke of 
ego resilience, so this strength of self against an adverse backdrop. But other commentators have questioned this. So is resilience something that is a static state of existence? Or is it more that it's a process that we undergo at given times throughout our lives? In which case, we would then argue that resilience is a process. It's dynamic. It encompasses positive adaptation within the context of significant adversity. It's formed of protective or even promotive factors, factors that promote, for instance, well-being. And this will vary according to context and according to time. Rutter argued that if circumstances change, resilience alters. So it's very much when we think of resilience as a process, as a contextually dependent phenomenon. But then we can get quite tautological about it, so I have a bit of a circular argument. What about the factors that cause people to engage in that process in the first place? Perhaps these are traits, perhaps these are enduring, stable and inherent characteristics to us. What if resilience is neither a trait nor a process uh, or a state? Indeed, it's an outcome. It's something that happens and that we really only begin to define in retrospect. So when we encounter adversity, we optimise. It's not a sense of absence of psychopathology. So it's not necessarily that we go through a process retaining our well-being, but rather it's the end point that we survived. And therefore we can, in retrospect, we can look back and say, you know what, I got through that, I was resilient. And often we identify that resilience was present because we define it through the existence of an unfavourable context. This is difficult to measure perhaps, uh, objectively, because often it may be that we think of resilience as being an outcome through self-report um, and we know that there can be a bias uh, with self-reporting. Uh, we're also kind of comparing, uh, if you like, to a event that um, we only deem as adverse by looking at it in retrospect. Is this somewhat of a binary approach, therefore, you know, that resilience is a trait, it's a state, it's an outcome, maybe it's on a continuum, uh, perhaps it's a mix of all three, and, and in a way, you know, does it matter? Um, because if resilience is seen as something positive, particularly at work, does it really matter where it comes from uh, uh, as long as we demonstrate it? With trait or state, there's the kind of nature-nurture argument too, whereby your trait uh, is perhaps inborn, whereas a, a state is something that can be learned. So I guess here's where that state or trait a dichotomy may be important because if resilience is something that we can indeed learn, well, that offers uh, us hope. So what about resilience at work? Why is it something that is so widely studied? Why has it become so pervasive? Indeed, resilience has become rather fashionable in recent years. Well, occupational stress, we know, can lead to negative physical and mental health outcomes. There's quite a fair bit of research to say that if we are stressed, if our well-being suffers as employees, our work performance will be impaired, leading to high turnover uh, and also leading to burnout. We know that stress can be context specific and also inherent to a particular role. So certain occupations are deemed to be more stressful than others. 
So resilience in the context of work is therefore the capacity to respond to pressures at work, dealing well, whatever that may mean, with work demands. And I put that in inverted commas because, well, there are different definitions as to what dealing well with work demands uh, might mean. And I guess we could argue there that employees may have a slightly different definition to coping uh, of coping than perhaps employers. And there is this sense that resilience isn't just coping, well, it's thriving. It's um, can we undergo a developmental process? Can we somehow become better people uh, when we demonstrate our resilience at work? So what's the backdrop to this? Well, in the 1990s, actually there was a shift from thinking about what are the protective factors at work? So what's the context that protects us as employees? To thinking about the individual processes. So how can we make individuals more resilient? What is it inherent to them that we need to understand what can individuals do in order to become more resilient and therefore remain productive? Therefore, we retain our staff. There was a paradigm shift as described by Richardson from looking at risk factors that lead to psychosocial problems to the identification of the strengths of the individual. So there's a bit of positive psychology going on there. Survival in the contemporary labour market. So how can we have people thriving? And indeed, there was a thriving at work report. But then cynics amongst us might say is this about adaptability or perhaps it's about creating a workforce which yields to demands so can we have a workforce that bends to the top-down pressures placed upon them in a way that will continue to produce outputs and contribute to the company's bottom line so the need for resilience has been normalized and perhaps one could argue that we haven't really questioned it we overwhelmingly look at resilience as a positive facet of an employee but then who owns that resilience is it the individual that, who has control over their resilience or have we increasingly started thinking of the workforce as something that can create resilient employees but very much by passing the buck to that employee so you know do some mindfulness for instance go on a one day resilience workshop and become more resilient so you can continue to produce Again, critics might argue that this is shifting the responsibility away from the employer onto the employee and acts as a smokescreen whereby organisations do not resolve the systemic problems that may actually undermine employee well-being at work. There has been a proliferation of resilience discourse and even more so with the current uh, backdrop of the global pandemic. There's also a narrative around organisational resilience, individual resilience. Are these different? Are they distinct from one another? In a study of child protection professionals, individual resilience was very much defined as something that was affected by both individual and also contextual factors but it was defined in a distinct way from the organizational facets so these child um, welfare workers said that what contributed to their own resilience was whether or not they had a personal history of maltreatment were they adequately trained and prepared to work with children uh, who may have been distressed, may have been abused, what their individual coping strategies were, 
did they have any traumatic stress as a result of their work and also were they encountering compassion fatigue so this is where you know you're giving so much compassion and providing so much empathy and support for others uh, that you reach a breaking point where you can no longer um, keep giving uh, organizationally however they saw resilience as being somewhat different so is the workload adequately managed is social support provided is supervision of a high quality what are uh, the organizational culture and climate like how does one feel day to day in the organization is there organizational commitment is there, is there loyalty a sense of citizenship and belonging to that organization and is there a sense of job satisfaction so again rather distinct um, if you like almost remits of responsibility perhaps or experience when it comes to individual versus organizational resilience uh, within this study there were also kind of these broader organizational themes um, that can be taken uh, and, and I've added my interpretation here that actually when we think about organizational resilience it, it's somewhat different to individual resilience um, it's thought of in how well an organization responds to disruption economic downturns for instance uh, environmental and, and kind of issues around sustainability how is employee well-being conceived what importance is placed on their productivity and, and do the systems within an organization facilitate that what does the strategy look like the long-term strategy so thinking beyond the quarterly report and having a long-term vision but also when we think about organizational resilience the focus in the literature both academic and and business is somewhat around response so rather than responding does there need to be a shift uh, towards thinking uh, about prevention so how can we preempt um, issues uh, such as uh, you know environmental challenges um, again you know the current context uh, is has been termed uh, unprecedented so there'll be much learning to come out of it as to how organizations can become more resilient in, in the face of a global pandemic So what are the critiques of resilience? Well, resilience is very difficult to define. Does it have scientific value that has been questioned? Can we actually reach an objective, a factual definition of resilience or, or is it far more subjective than that and, and very much socially constructed and in the eye of the beholder? There's currently no gold standard of research methods and methodology to get under the skin of resilience as a concept indeed some critics have argued that resilience is viewed as a positive adaptation but defined from a western psychological discourse so it's all about individual relational capacities but things that are deemed as somewhat perhaps glamorous or, or touted as perhaps you know if we we take the kind of um, much um, again critiqued uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is that very much western gaze of that self-actualization through things like academic success or healthy romantic relationships you know whatever is fashionable in the current context uh, perhaps whatever's i don't know instagrammable or or, or paints a, a a picture of of that kind of perfect almost marketed consumerist type of lifestyle um is deemed to be a reflection of one's resilience um and that has a certain uh, lens added onto it that i think we can uh, pick up pick apart resilience is therefore bound by a socio-cultural context Some further critiques, and, and this is from a forthcoming uh, paper, uh, 
that I've uh, contributed to. There is an emphasis on the self-directed nature of resilience and it's very much viewed through a definition driven by my market imposed demand. It's arguably an embodiment of neoliberal values. So these were, um, well, we hear about neoliberalism uh, quite a lot and, and it's, um, if you like, one element of it is, is thinking about how markets are defined. Um, so um, moving away from state control uh, of markets uh, and within that of a greater individualization. And, and these are a, a range of uh, reforms stemming from uh, the era of Thatcher and Reagan, uh, of which the effects uh, endure to this very day. So we argue that actually we need to move away from these neoliberal values, which are about economic value creation, but rather shift to a dignity perspective. So it's not about the use and abuse of workers and their instrumentalization for the economy, but rather recognizing humanity and intrinsic worth of employees. And the responsibility for resilience ought to be shared by communities and organizations. So really moving beyond neoliberal values, moving away from this construct of productivity and profitability over people, but rather what is the self-defined view of resilience? How can we regain our dignity and our humanity in the way that we define resilience in the future? And there is a line from an article in uh, the Harvard Business Review, uh, which was all about that actually resilience should not be about enduring, but rather how one rests and how one can recharge. So really to draw this to a close, what can we do with this concept of resilience? How can we make this work for us? Well, one study argued that there are protective factors that individuals can proactively use to build their resilience. And it might be through things like gaining greater education, formal, informal, having a mentor, having strong social networks. And we know these have largely moved to online networks at present. Um, but again, there's something about keeping those human connections alive. Systemic solutions, so resource, money, time. We have reawakened, um, which I think is a hugely positive thing, discourse around how we reward our essential workers. So we know that we would not survive at present without our healthcare workers, without um, our shopkeepers, the people who are keeping the economy going, um, despite the huge challenges that are faced at present. Are they adequately remunerated? Are they rewarded in, in a way that recognises the value of their societal contributions? This paper also recognised that workshops, self-reflection, cognitive behavioural therapy based interventions seem to go some way towards helping individuals develop their psychological resilience. At work, giving people greater ownership of projects, there's uh, and the notion of good work where autonomy is encouraged, uh, where people engage with employment which contributes to their own development and also to societal good and is closely aligned to their values and thinking about organizations which are compassionate and this links to uh, some work that i did recently providing workshops on behalf of the british psychological society uh, for psychologists and, and other healthcare workers in how we can create uh, a national health service, uh, for instance, that is more compassionate 
to its staff and I'm by no means the only person working on this. I would uh, urge you to look at the work of uh, Michael West and also the work uh, being done by Michael West and Susie Bailey uh, at the King's Fund at present, particularly thinking about compassionate leadership. Sustainability, so how can we think in the long term, how can we think about organisations that are sustainable um, and don't just take a short term as view so staff don't burn out uh, and actually are given um, the tools to be able to invest into their own futures and the futures of um, subsequent generations. So lastly, let's just challenge some misconceptions. Maybe actually resilience isn't fully about thriving. Is it realistic that we can thrive currently? You know, many of us um, are at home currently. We are likely to have caring responsibilities. Uh, we may ourselves not be well. Um, so is resilience actually just being able to get through each day, you know, uh, one day at a time. Small wins uh, for some of us having a shower uh, or, or getting dressed each day is uh, an immense success and, and one to be celebrated. I urge you to think about pausing as well at present and, and I know that's not possible uh, for all of us, particularly those of us who um, are currently working at the front line uh, of patient care. Um, this paper looked at a relational pause and actually argued that if uh, together in teams uh, we take a pause, um, and this doesn't have to refer to teams, it, we can really think about that individual pause, one can diffuse adversity, triggered anxiety. So can we take time to reflect, to pause, to nap, to rest, to not be pushing ourselves to remain productive when actually we're facing something that we're only just, if at all, <laughs> beginning to make sense of. It's uh, incredibly challenging to have the bandwidth to even conceive um, the current pandemic and its impact. So can we just pause to breathe, to think, um, or just simply you know, as I say, celebrate the small wins, which might be, hey, um, I brushed my hair today, <laughs> or, uh, you know, I enjoyed that show on Netflix, uh, or, or what have you, or even I stared blankly out of my window for, for an hour, and um, that in itself, um, I think we should seek to define as resilience, given the current climate. And lastly, I want to end with this uh, quote from a paper by Sister and others, and they defined resilience as the ability to maintain the persistence of one's orientation towards existential purposes. And what that says to me is that actually our own existential purpose is very much individual. It's very much something that we define for ourselves. And let's therefore not allow our workforce to define the purpose of our existence for us. Um, sure, our values may well be linked to our work, um, but resilience is, is far greater than that. Um, therefore, I urge you all to try to revisit that sense of your own values, that sense of you know meaning and what you want from your life. Um, and again, this links to that real pause. So can we maintain our persistence, our persistence towards whatever we ourselves define as our existential purpose? Okay, thank you very much uh, for listening. I hope that was useful. That was really designed to just give you a taster of the concept of resilience. I want you to keep questioning um, and you know if you see yet another article and, and I'm sorry that I myself am contributing to this uh, about resilience and you're feeling fed up 
perhaps that's because you're feeling like the other uh, so for instance your work is trying to take ownership over your own resilience and I hope that I gave you a sense of that only you um, can define what resilience uh, means for you thank you very much uh, and if you felt that that was useful you know please do let me know in the comments below okay thank you take care all